Bada bing, bada boom. You know what it is. Geeks are back on the map, baby. Let's go. We're here for a little geeks chat, a little geeks pod. Here to shoot the shoot the turds. Here we go. Uh, let's get into this first topic of the day. I'm here with uh, Front Kick Fish, Dano, and my boy Goosey. Um, I mean, UFC, what is this? UFC 294, Makachev, Volkanovski 2. We got a bunch of late replacements. A couple OG champions stepping up. This is phenomenal. I mean, we're talking about two fights that, yeah, it sucks to see Charles go out and this, this type of thing. But, I mean, Costa and Hobbs out. Like, those, okay, those fights were insane. But we're still getting great treats here. We're getting some real competitive bouts. And uh, I'm seeing one-way traffic in one of these. So, off rip, I mean, what, what, what are the thoughts here? I mean, this is kind of a crazy scene. I mean, when do you want to start? Front, front kick. Let's start with you real quick. Yeah, all right. We can get into it. Uh, main event. I'll just break it down from there. I got, I'm, I'm taking Volk, bro. I'm taking Volk. And the only thing that scares me, he's in enemy territory. The judges, I don't know how it's going to go, but, uh, he outstruck him, dude. And Islam, he was in the last fight, dude, he was just grabbing on to him and just praying for his life. He just wanted to grab a hold of Volk and just keep him there. And, uh, Volk's going to take no shit. He's going to try to get up, and he's just going to let them hands go. I think he's really going to try to knock him the fuck out this time. But I think uh, I'm taking Volk. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big, big underdog card for me. So, I don't know. Let's Dana, what do you goes. got? You think you think this uh, weight cut? Because that's kind of a thing, right? Because Volk was going up and down, and he was thinking about 45. So, like, what are you thinking about that main event? Yeah, man. I, I, like Fish... I'm rooting for Volk, but I'm going to be on the other side of this. I'm going to take Makachev for a couple of reasons, because Makachev knew he was fighting at this date. He knew he was fighting in Abu Dhabi. He knew he was fighting at 155. We're going to look on the other side of this fight. We got Volk, who's coming off the couch. He he, he was planning for 145 against Apuria. He's going to have to put on at least 10 pounds, hopefully of muscle if he's going to come up to this weight at 55 who knows that how that's going to affect the gas tank who knows how that's going to affect his strategy even just in the beginning of like fish said i'm going to knock him out i'm going to get him out of there if he's one of those guys who's going to come in and he knows crap i'm at short notice crap i'm underprepared i got to get him out in the first couple rounds if he doesn't and he gasses we know volk uh we know Islam's going to be there for five rounds. Even though he was beat up in the last fight, he he was there. Um, I'm going to take Makachev, who who's ready for the state, who's been there, who's done that, who who like Fish said, in home territory. I think it all favors Makachev, but but it also all favors the absolute underdog of Volkanovski to come in here and have a storybook ending. Um, as much as I'd like that, I got to go Makachev, and I'm going to go decision. Yeah, it's interesting. You zoom out. You got to see it from uh from those that non biased standard. But Goosey, tell us about your main event, and then kind of take us into this co main that kind of switched up. Oh yeah, um, off rip here. I I see everyone's very hyped up about the changes. I think I'm a little bit bummed. You know, I really liked Costa Hamza. That matchup was intriguing, and then uh, main event Oliveira Islam. I thought it would have been pretty competitive. You know, on the other hand, I think Volkanovski, that fight was so close with Islam the first time that it it deserved a full camp preparation for their second bout. Not it, This feels kind of rushed in a way. And um, I will pick Makachev because of that. I think that Volk, it's going to be super hard to get prepared. Five rounds, pound for pound, number two or whatever. Islam is I think that uh it's definitely a tall task for Volk coming off elbow surgery and he's looking a little pudgier than uh than he has in recent fight weeks yeah that's facts those are a couple things that you know you guys both brought to light about the Volk it's so easy it's so easy to want to ride the Volk train I mean what a story what a what a step up in this position um real quick on the co-main I mean I'm just gonna throw my my little my piece at it. I mean, I think Hamza, this is one way traffic. Like I'm not, I'm not saying Kamaru Usman's a a bum or in any sense. I just think that um, people are still sleeping on Hamza and what he can kind of do in the, in the octagon. Um, And Usman's just not the right place. This is not the right time. This is not the right bounce back. 
Uh, I think he relies a lot on his physicality, and that is not something he's going to have an advantage in this matchup. Um, but, dude, everyone's going Johnny Walker. He The line's like, what, plus 350? It's a big boomer. Uh, it's not coming down, but everybody seems to like it. Uh, front kick, what what are you seeing? Because, you know, a lot of people are going to question that. They're going to be like, these, you know, we've seen him go down some pretty gnarly ways. Um, this is a tough dude. So what's your what's your comeback to that? Yeah, I mean, so I got Yanni Walker in this. Uh I just um I want the underdogs to win bad. And um Yanni Walker is just he's a he's an easier dude to root for. Uh he's got a personality, he's funny as hell, and just I think he can do it. He's got a reach advantage and I think uh, he could really play a, a good game plan if he just goes at the leg kicks, chops up the leg just like uh, Jan did. And um, but yeah, give me, give me, give me Johnny Long Leg Walker. I think he does, gets it done with a bunch of butchering leg kicks, gets him out of there. Chin questionable, but if he doesn't get cracked, I I, I see him staying at a good distance from him. Yeah. Let's open it up. What else are you guys seeing on this card? Who are you guys liking at, at a broad distance? What stands out? I got a um, – you could go ahead real quick. I mean, I, I quick ones for me. Makayev sub, Victor Henry decision. I see an upset alert on that one. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think that Shara Bullet is a little bit overhyped. I'm interested to see how uh, he does against a stand-up dog in Bruno Silva. Trevor Peak, always just an absolute banger and definitely like his chances there. Tim Elliott makes it funky. I mean, this is this is a fun card through and through. Um, Johnny Walker, always entertaining. I will say Usman Chimaev is sticking out to me as uh, the biggest firework on this card in my eyes just because I think that Usman – with those bad knees really benefits from a shorter camp here. You know, they said he's been in, he's been training. Um, I would imagine he was trying to get a fight in before the end of the year. And this came into play, obviously a little bit rushed, but when you're 36, you know what you're doing in there, you know? And I think that up a weight class, the chin benefits, the two most likely outcomes I'm seeing in that would be Hams out round one or Usman decision. Um, Hams out round one, probably most likely just because he is like a uh, bat shot out of hell. But I think uh, definitely bangers in that one. No, yeah, I I like I like what you're thinking on that one too, Usman. Um, but with the, I would let me go back to the first fight you were talking about, Bruno Silva and uh, Shara. But yeah, Bruno Silva battle tested, dude, and this guy questionable uh, opponents coming up. And uh, does he have a gas tank? We don't know. If uh, I'm really thinking round two, just like CEO's putting up right now, round two, I think he gets it done. KO, bro. He's got some fucking bombs in his hands. This guy can see out of both his eyes, or what? I, this is. I don't, that's what I don't know. That's what I don't Fetty know. Watt, boy. Yeah, I think I think he's I think he's missing a little bit of something up top. Um, Dano, what what's standing out? I know you're a Nathaniel Wood fan. He's got an interesting matchup, but what else? Anything popping off the paper? I, I think Nathaniel Wood is going to take that fight. Um, what what really interests me on the prelims is the Cedricus dumas fight versus Abu Azaitar. We know Cedricus, he is a gangster, but we saw him in his last fight against Cody Durden, who he kind of looked like he knew how to be in there, but once he was in there, he really didn't know where to go from there. Once he got Cody to the ground, um, or Cody Brundage, I should say, not Cody Durden. Cody Brundage, um, he was really looking at his corner a lot, kind of going like, what do I do next? What do I do next? Um, he did get through that fight through a decision. Great to see. But he's going against Abu Zaitar, 37-year-old, I, I want to say. Um, we are in Zaitar's, you know, home territory of the Abu Dhabi. Um, will he get the home judges? We don't know, and and we I really got to think that um, Cedricus has got to get a finish here just for that reason. But what worries me is that just IQ in the ring. We have seen him on social media. If anyone's following him on social media, he is beefing up. He is getting a little shredded. He's got the six-pack. 
Um, he, he's looking ready to go, but just is that IQ there? And I'm going to take a risk and say it is. This is a classic for me, the UFC 28, 29-year-old in Cedricus going against the older guy on his way out in Abu Azaitar. We got to think they're going to favor someone. I'm going to pick their favoring uh, Cedricus here. I'm going to pick Cedricus KO on Abu in this great card. Let's go. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, I think another one, Goosey already said it, Trevor Peak, a guy to look out for. Um, but what what I'm what I mean by that is, I mean, obviously people know him for like the crazy punches he threw in his last fight. But I I'm I'm gonna go ahead and like I would gamble that he's not gonna come out the same way he did in that last fight. You know, just weighing on the results. I uh, look for Trevor Peak to come out with a little bit more composure in this one, which is um something that we're not really gonna know if that's gonna help him or hurt him until until it's all said and done. But I like the over in that one. I do like the over in that one. I do think that he's going to really scale down from that whole sprint at you approach. Because if you haven't seen his last fight, I mean, that you got it. You just have to go watch it. It's a it's a can't miss. It's a steamer. But you guys got anything else on this card? Um... Yeah. Yeah. Javid Basharat versus Victor Henry is a super high level scrap. Yeah. And. It's not two names that really jump off the page at you, but it's two guys that are just getting it done in impressive fashion recently. You know, uh, Victor Henry is absolutely dominating rounds of fights against Tony Gravely. He's got a few other wins. You know, Ronnie Barcellos, that win just keeps aging better and better. And I think that nobody should really be a big underdog there. You know, Victor Henry is experienced probably a little bit of the plus money, but at uh he's like in the plus threes, I think. Definitely, definitely worth a shot. IMO. For sure, yeah. for sure. I was about to talk about that one real quick again. I said it earlier, decision, but the reason why is just damage over control. If uh and but also it could go the other way. Basharat, um Victor Henry's not in home territory. So uh but yeah, I think he could really get it done. That's a that line's pretty inflated. They see that line, and uh, Victor Henry's got it done at around the same price. Facts. Well, we got another thing that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Here, we'll jump off this UFC card. Um, stay tuned. We're gonna drop more content for this that that big pay per view coming up soon. Um, we got Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury boxing in I think two weeks time which is just insane to think about. It's already this close. Um, I guess we'll just kind of go around while everyone can get their little take in there. Uh, I'll just jump off rip. I don't I don't see this being competitive. Um, I'm just hoping that Naganu can, like, survive so that, you know, he can, like, hold that card for the MMA peoples out there. But, uh, man, dude, this is going to be he, – he's so slick on counters and stuff. Like, people just don't understand that, like, even though he's reckless, like, He's just going to swerve one thing, and it's going to be – man, I, I'm i not liking Nagani's chances. So I'm thinking I'm thinking Fury in, like, three or four is, like, what I've come down to. But, Goosey, let's go your way. Yeah. Um, Fury made this one a little bit more interesting recently. I believe he is either in talks or has already signed a fight in <laughs> December for, Did like, six think? weeks after with Usyk. But um, I, I'm interested. You know, obviously, I do think that Tyson Fury probably schools him. But at the end of the day, Ngannou literally hits like a truck. And I think he's going to be coming at him from different angles than he's used to. Like, he probably hits Fury good a few times. And, you know, it's heavyweight boxing. Anyone's got a shot. I think it'll be a spectacle more than anything. I bet that the... uh graphics and promos are incredible for this one so everyone will be hyped up at least more than they are now by the time that fight is yeah dana what's your take and you got any takes from that card this weekend <laughs> del and Dianus. well i'll say <laughs> this goose goosey and i have a group chat with one of our friends and i, I called this Danis fight with logan paul perfectly right and i didn't say that he was going to get absolutely dominated the way he did but what i thought was going to happen 
was that they're going to go out and fight. They're going to go to the decision and Logan Paul is going to win, win pretty confidently. And I think that's what this is with this little crossover boxing. And I think that's what's going to happen with this Tyson Fury and Ngannou um, um, fight where these guys who are the A side, I guess you could say, they're going to pick their guys. They're going to hype up this fight to where it's all all fine and dandy and whatnot. And then they're just going to carry him to the decision and, and they're going to, they're going to ride away with all the money. I, I think this was a total, in hindsight, no one should have bought this pay-per-view this past weekend. This Danis show was a total screw job from Danis. He let us down totally. For some reason, I had hope in him. For some reason, I had some faith in him, and he didn't show us anything. Logan Paul whooped him for six rounds. Yes, he did a guillotine. Yes, he, he tried to take down, but there's no competitive edge in this and i guess if we're looking for a competitive boxing match we're in the wrong wrong side of the internet but for what it's worth that was a freaking waste of time <laughs> yeah it was well said not yet um this uh fury and Ngannou fight though uh i got fury's probably gonna win but i think Ngannou. i think what he got to do make some body investments if he hits like a truck i don't see uh flabby mcgee taking a bunch of body shots from uh a peekaboo style tyson uh mike tyson trained Nanganu. but um yeah if he can rock the body a couple of times never know but um yeah i don't think uh <laughs> if he just goes out head hunting he's not gonna not gonna be good but um yeah tyson fury big he's gonna be leaning all over him putting his weight on him getting him tired as hell that's how i really seen it going down for tyson fury he's gonna do his thing. He, he puts his weight on you and just gets you tired as fuck. He's going to hang his whole shit on you. Flabby McGee. And then when it's time, puts the hands on you. Flabby wrist, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One last thing with the boxing is I'm pretty sure the rumblings of Mike Perry, Eddie Alvarez are, um, are, are kind of legit now. And that's kind of looking for December. So that's crazy as fuck. I mean, talk about big names taking the stage of the bare knuckle scene. Perry. What are you guys thinking? Because dude, I'm, I'm gung ho Mike Perry. He's the boy. I mean, that is his sport, but dude, Eddie Alvarez against Chad Mendez was, was ridiculous. That was like ridiculous. Like he really lived up to that nickname. Was it underground Eddie? Like that was ridiculous. They, I think that they got the perfect mix. Like, I'm worried for both these guys' sake. Like, this is going to be real. This is not going to end well. Like, <laughs> what's your take, Goose? Um, I think it's the meme that Eddie Alvarez already has is, you tell me who's the most violent. Like, that's what we're getting in this fight because neither guy's going to want to take a step back. E both guys are willing to wear a punch to give a punch. And I think there's going to be a lot of that bare knuckles it's going to be bloody. It's going to be brutal. And uh, you're going to feel a little queasy at the end, but they are going to put on a show for sure. Um, BKFC's got something special brewing over there, you know, where they have a few of these pieces that can make super fire fights. Now uh, promoting with Bryce Hall a little bit. I think if they put some cards together here, there's more eyes on them than ever. Yeah. Dano front kick, you got anything about on that BKFC banger? I'm I'm really looking forward to this this Mike Perry and Eddie Alvarez fight because we saw Mike Perry in his last fight with Luke Rockhold, who who was ready to go, he was ready to throw down, but once he got in that ring or a circle or whatever the heck you call it in in BKFC world, once he started feeling the fresh fists of Mike Perry, he kind of quit. We saw him kind of, you know, he did take some damage. He was in there with some with some of the hard punches that Perry was throwing. He he had some good exchanges, but we kind of saw him say, hey, no, no more. I, I'm good. We go, go into this fight with Eddie Alvarez, who who's talked about pretty much his whole career. He grew up bare knuckle fighting. He grew up, like you were saying, CEO, with the nickname of the underground king, I believe. He fights. He's known to do this. He's been doing this. And he's walking right into the King's lair, King's 
office of Mike Perry, head of BKFC, in my opinion. I believe Mike Perry is perfect for this. This is going to be their perfect fight of 1A, 1B going at it. I think if you're going to watch a BKFC fight, if it's too gruesome for you, whatever, watch this fight. This is going to be crazy. Of course, I'm going to ride with Mike Perry because, like I said, I think he is perfect for BKFC. We saw in the Julian Lane fight, I remember CEO, you, me, and Fish. Or no, it was Fish and I. We were watching this on a bus ride, long (laughs) bus ride back from wherever the heck we were. These two dudes just absolutely throwing down. I think Mike Perry is the perfect one for this. Um, You can't not pick Mike Perry in a BKFC fight, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Probably by decision, though. I will say this. I was seeing uh, Perry Till face-offs at the Misfits card this weekend, and that would be a pretty sweet fight for sure if we could get the gorilla back in there. I don't think he he said he didn't want to do bare knuckle. Yeah, I could see why not. He's getting in (laughs) beefs with that other boxer that's there, and then he's the backup for the original fight, and then – you know, he's got Eddie Alvarez. I mean, everybody wants a piece of Mike Perry right now. I mean, this guy's a superstar. <laughs> yeah, that was chaos the whole weekend. Mike Perry included. That whole prime card was absolute chaos through and through. Just a proven shit show. I, and I think we are all dumb for just not knowing it was going to turn out <laughs> exactly like that. Entertainment factor, though. It was decent. You know, Shout out Danis for getting into the ring because I swear, I mean, I was sold he was not showing up to that man. So the fact that he even stood in there, I'll give him like a slight W, but man, at least go for it. At least go for it, dude. Yeah, I think he, he just didn't want to get memed because he uh built this up so much on social media. I wish he would have had like a legit coach and stuff, you know. I feel like his strategy was decent. He just didn't have the cardio or skills of like someone grinding in the gym every day. Yeah, I think he's just got no hands, man. I think he's just yeah, yeah. like he didn't want to go for it because yeah, he knew he was about to get completely mean for sure. Like if he opened up too much for a second, yeah. But I mean, even the antics were an L. Like I, I'd love to sit here and be like, oh, at least he got him at this moment, but. I mean, dude, you got stuffed. Your takedown got stuffed, and you fell on your back on the geed. He almost got, uh, he almost got hammer fist to, she. Yeah, that would have been bad. Yeah, all right, you guys got anything else? We sign off. I'm good. Good. All right, Be let's in. go. Stay tuned. We got more content coming. UFC 294. Let's go. Geeks in the building. Geeks out. Drop a like, comment, subscribe. Let's go.